I will call to order the Community Development Committee meeting. As a reminder to all of you out there, this is a continuation of our meeting that began on July 20th. Um, and so with that in respect, we are going to continue on the agenda as if we were still meeting on July 20th. Um, I will call for the roll and I have a few comments related to that. Olson? Here. Janser? Here. Strait? Here. Pajagula? Here. Wolski? Here. All right, so this is kind of for the committee and for the audience as well. Um, I, I feel like we have a task before us today, and that task is to act on the applications that were presented to us last week. Um, I don't feel that our task is related to finding funding for projects that this committee does not fund. I think right now all we do is look at the applications and deal with the applications that we have. Uh, we are not going to have further presentations. We thank everyone that made presentations last week. If the committee has a specific question for one of the presenters, we're happy to call you up and, and have you answer the question. But as far as further presentations, we're not looking at that. Um, in the week since we last met, we've had a lot of public input. So thank you if you have done that. We have considered all of those uh, requests as well. And for the committee, I, I've been on this committee since its inception, and at the time, John Van Grinsman was our city attorney, and he gave us very sage advice um, because this is a difficult decision to make. And so he advised us to think with your head and not with your heart, because we do know that today that we have more requests in front of us than we can fund. So with that, uh, we were ready to start conversation last week, so we will open it up to conversation or motions or however the committee wants to forge forward. Uh, Madam Chairman, I, just to start, I, I want a clarification from our city attorney regarding uh, the Cirrus Valley Animal Shelter in terms of uh, the presentation. I, I enjoyed your presentation, uh, sir. I, I felt in that there was the one aspect of uh, the political subdivision connection that was kind of gray in my mind when I left. And um, I just wanted a point of clarification regarding the legitimacy of that application. City Attorney? Chairman Olson and Alderman Strait. Um, the definition that the City Council approved in 2014 says that if nonprofit groups are to be eligible, they should be limited to partnership projects with political subdivisions. Um, between last meeting and this meeting, Mr. McDonald did submit a mutual aid agreement and an annex um, between the Service Valley Animal Shelter and Ward County Emergency Services. Um, and it is ultimately up to this committee and the council to, to determine whether or not this is a partnership project. But I guess my concerns in reviewing those documents were um, first, that it's not related to the project of building the facility or expanding the facility. Um, it's more of a mutual aid agreement, which the Cirrus Valley Animal Shelter provides assistance with welfare of animals to the Ward County Emergency Services. Beyond that, within the agreement, it specifically says that there's no partnership. It shouldn't be considered to be a partnership. If you look at Section 9, of that agreement it says nothing in this agreement shall be so construed as to create a relationship of employer employee principal and agent partnership or joint venture between Cirrus Valley Animal Shelter and the cooperating party um, which is Ward County Emergency Management so those were are some things that the committee should consider it is ultimately up to you to determine whether or not that's a partnership project but those were the concerns that I had Thank you. Any further questions for the city attorney? Oh, thank you. All right. Alderman Padgula. I had two questions, ma'am. Thank you. Um, first, for um, the park district regarding um, proposal seven, Roman numeral seven, and the second one for um, the city manager. So, should we call Ms. DeWitt up? Mr. Witt. Thank you, ma'am. Um, ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> um, 
I wanted to, I'm still not clear about the funding support from the park district. Um, I understand they pay for the operation of the zoo in addition to what the friends group, if you will, um, zoo partners or whatever it's called, um, supports. But is the park district allocating any money toward construction of these facilities? They will. The question at hand is how much money we would receive philanthropically versus a grant and then what we'd have to bond for. Ultimately, we would hope to raise as much money as we possibly could philanthropically to reduce any type of bond issue. So are they funding this with bonds? Or might, may, so it sounds like there's no firm <coughs> commitment at this point from them. They would, and if Jared Olson, he's Director of Operations with the Park District, would have anything to add, I would ask if he had anything more than what I am saying, but at this point in time, we're looking at basically nearly a nine to ten million dollar campaign. We are asking for support for the first phase of that, which would be five million. <coughs> and with that said, with the total campaign of nine to ten million dollars, we were looking at a third to be raised through a grant, uh -huh. and we were looking to the community facilities with that, a third of it philanthropically, <coughs> and then Sorry, the other third of it what? philanthropically a third of it through donations, and then the last third would be bonded. But that wouldn't be coming from tax dollars that the park district can levy? No, Harvard we'd probably look at a loan. <coughs> a loan? <coughs> I'm sorry, a loan? A loan. Okay, okay. Have your questions been answered? Um, would you like Mr. Olson to come forward? No, I think, I, I think I've gotten what I need. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions, other comments? Um, I had one for the city manager. Yeah. Oh, I'm, oh sorry. I'm sorry, yes. This the was regarding um, the request Roman numeral four for a recycling transit transfer, not transit <coughs> facility. <coughs> recycling materials would be transiting. Um, if we were to not allocate the 2.5 million from this fund and we instead <coughs> went to fund it through the general um, well, I guess we could fund it through the infrastructure portion of the sales tax or one of those little segments, but I, I think they're pretty much spoken for, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, if we were to fund it through uh, general uh, funding, most of which, all of which would be from a property tax increase, um, how much would that raise, you know, offhand, the property taxes for the average homeowner? Uh, right. Madam Chairman and Alderman Padragula, the city would have to bond currently for about 1.75 million of that project in order to advance it. That bond would likely be paid for out of the water, or excuse me, the sanitation rates. So it wouldn't be a mill levy increase, it would be an increase to rates. Uh, so, I mean, a tax is a tax is a tax, right, or a fee in this case. Uh, if you wanted a mill equivalent, then the mill equivalent would be uh, roughly about eight and a half mills or so. Which translates into the one, one and three quarter million dollars. But again, I'm, I'm not suggesting it's going to be financed through property tax is right. something you could choose to do, but it uh, is contemplated to be financed through debt and be paid, that debt be paid for in the way of sanitation rates. So the average rates that people pay would, would go up somewhat when don't like the exact number. And am I correct in saying that the difference between 2.5 and 1.75 is some money we have reserved for that purpose? Correct. Okay. Um, do you have any rough idea how much sanitation rates would go up if we financed it that way? Um, I do not off the top of my head. It may be that public work staff does. Um, Mr. Jonathan? <laughs> Madam Chairman, Alderman Padagula, we don't have an exact number of what it would go up. It, it's a combination of, you know, our revenues are a combination of the landfill tipping fees and then the sanitation rates. So we would have to do, I guess, a more in-depth uh, look at what they would have to go up. Like the city manager said, we would most likely bond for this, sell bonds for this, and then the bond payment would be recouped through uh, a combination of landfill tipping fees and or uh, sanitation rates. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Alderman Walski. Uh, Chairman Olson, thank you. Uh, 
Mr. Barry, uh, $2.5 million request, a $1.75 million uh, bond or, or uh, additional cost. Uh, the 750000 that that separates those two, what is the source and, and status of those dollars right now? So the source of those dollars would be sanitation funds that we have. But keep in mind, the, you know, when you look at what's going on in the sanitation um, utility, we still have a new cell to build at the landfill. So that's going to cost us considerable money to, uh, of course, acquire the land and, of course, ex expand the facility. So those funds are going to be can be utilized for that activity or to supplement this activity. It's kind of where you want to spend the existing funds that you have, you know, available in that fund at this point in time. Uh, we do know that the gap to advance recycling, a recycling type facility in our community, is about the 1.75 from a bonding standpoint. It doesn't mean that that's the cost. That just means what we'd have to borrow. Sure. If you use what you have in sanitation revenue currently. Uh, for the difference to finance this, uh, then you'd have to make that up someplace else to finance, you know, the cell expansion or other sanitation improvements. Um, one Older follow, Chairman. Yes. Uh, Tom, at the at the last meeting, I I requested uh, maybe a, a bit of a look in terms of <coughs> how we have allocated funds out of improvements and the, and the other sales tax buckets for some of these particular projects. Um, were you able to take a, a closer look at that, or would you care to uh, pr provide some general comments on, on how the budget's shaping out? I know I, I feel like we had maybe 500000 in last year's improvements fund for, for the auditorium, maybe. I don't, I don't remember the specifics, but I'm, I'm kind of drawing on memory here. Uh, City Manager. Madam Chair, Alderman Wolski, not sure exactly what kind of information you'd want. Um, I can tell you, and as we've shared during the budget workshops, there's been considerable municipal projects funded out of the sales tax infrastructure improvements fund, for example, and other sub funds um, that are in the allocation of the first and second penny. Uh, this year we'll be doing exactly the same thing. Every project that we could finance through the sales tax monies available to us in those allocations have been accounted for. And there are more projects, municipal projects, than there is funding. Uh, so that, that problem continues and, and will continue for the foreseeable future. Um, I think in regard to your question about how the budget is shaping up, it's not shaping up well. This is going to be a very difficult budget year for us. Um, we've been floating around the 40 to 45 mil um, area for some time in trying to close the budget. Um, that's uh, that's considerable, considering that the current mill levy is 79 at this point in time. Now we are endeavoring to get that as low as we can. As I mentioned at the last city council meeting, uh, we'll be cutting positions, we'll be cutting um, operational costs, we'll be cutting equipment, we'll be uh, denying a series of requests uh, to the tune of you know more than five million dollars. That doesn't mean that those needs aren't there. Uh, it just means we can't afford them right now. Now. All that been being said, we still have a revenue problem. And that revenue problem, as I've mentioned for many months now, stems in the fact that the city has shifted its fixed costs to a variable revenue stream. And that variable revenue stream, which is sales tax, has been depleted significantly over the last two years to the tune of a 33% reduction. And that leaves us with a big revenue gap. So it's not solely an expense problem, it is a huge revenue shifting problem um, and those together have created a very challenging budget for us this year. Thank you. Alderman Padragula. Follow up on that. Uh, run the numbers by me again in terms of uh, the current le uh, mill levy versus what it looks like we'll have to have. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't. Well, uh, yes. Madam Chair and Alderman Padragula, the, the current mill levy is 79 okay. mills. Um, and you're thinking it'll go up 40? Well. When you, when you run the numbers that we have so far, um, it's looking like about 40 mills is what we would need uh, to add to the mill levy. There are a lot of nuances in those numbers, so I can tell you it will not be 40. That's not what we'll be recommending. It'll be less than that. Um, and to, to get into how we're going to make that less is going to take a considerable conversation, but um, I don't know if I've satisfied your 
question at this point, but I can continue with more information if you need it at this point. I think I've heard enough. I think that's more an issue for the council to decide when it comes to funding. Okay. Uh, I want to be uh, mindful of the chair's admonition. We shouldn't stray too far off this. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'll stray some, but I'll, I'll set the limit here. Um, so we're talking potentially up to half again levy of property tax of what we have now potentially but hopefully you'll keep it lower and you've done a diligent job and so has your predecessor actually but potentially we're looking like having again um, madam chair um alderman Padragula, yes and, and i don't think we'll be able to do that i don't think the council or the community will tolerate that so we're being very mindful of that as a staff <laughs> the other uh considerations are that it took us 10 years to get here and we're not going to get out of this in one. Uh, this will be a series of adjustments that will need to be made over the, the foreseeable short term um, that will make for several challenging budget years for us. Um, and so that is partly the reason we have begun to forecast and model over longer periods than we have had traditionally done in the city. That will give us better options and more flexibility in how to approach these kinds of issues going forward, um, given the constraints we have today. Thank you very much. I appreciate that very um, sobering <laughs> dose of reality. Alderman Janser. Um, Madam Chairman, to sort of come back to the job that we have at hand today, which is as this committee to figure out how to or you know, what of these um, requests to to try to, to or to recommend to the council that be funded um, I, I guess I would offer a motion that um, we um, recommend funding the requests for the auditorium uh, the council chambers the Carnegie Center, and that we um, r remove the uh, YMCA request and the animal shelter request um, from consideration based on um, the uh, lack of a bona fide um, arrangement with a public entity. Is there a second? Second that. Discussion. Oh, well, I apologize, Alderman oh, Street. No, that's right, Chairman Olson. I, I um, am committed that it was my line of thinking and just Mr. McDonald's here uh, request. I, I just found that uh, this body has to follow the guidelines of what is due at the time of the request and there was some gray area with that and so I, I did want to comment because I in initially thinking about it I had hoped that we could match that request of your hard work and the funds you had already raised and so I um, I did just want to comment that on, at this time but I've got numbers uh, in mind to proceed at Mr. Janser's uh, motion. Sure. Alderman Janser. Um, and I, and I guess I would I would echo the comments of Alderman Strait with regard to to the project. I mean I, I think it's a good project. Um, I would note that um, uh, I had some correspondence with um, Mr. McDonald several months ago. I believe related to the necessity of having that uh, public entity uh, sponsorship. And it you know it's unfortunate or disappointing that that isn't fully in place uh, at the time of the application that we received uh, and and probably not today in a, in a form that allows us to uh, to utilize that so but um, it, you know it is what what we have before us and so um, that's the reason that I make the motion not because I don't believe that uh, the project has uh, value thank you can we get a dollar amount on the motion on the floor um, I didn't do the quick math on I that. I think the city manager city is. city manager has a calculator and he's diligently uh, he's tapping away. doing math. City manager? And Madam Chair, the dollar amount, if my figuring is correct, is $1,012,500. Mr. Thank you. 
Alderman Pajagula. If I could ask the proposer of the motion, which I just shared, for some clarification, as soon as he finishes writing. <laughs> um, is the intent then to leave the balance for discussion and debate and whatever, um, just to kind of get, get us toward our goal? Is that, is that the intent? Or do you want to not fund the rest of them? Um, my intention was completely stated in the motion. What we do afterwards with the rest of the funds, if anything, uh, would be a separate motion. Thank you. I feel very comfortable seconding it then. Any further discussion on the motion? Any further discussion? Alderman Walski. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I, I appreciate the motion, Alderman Janser. Uh, this is, uh, these are the three, three projects for me that I think very much meet the spirit of, uh, of this committee and the intent of the fund, uh, and, and they, they kind of allow us to do two things at once, uh, which is take care of ourselves and uh, ourselves being the city. Uh, and, and honor the fund, I think. So I, I, I'm prepared to support this motion and then get into the meat of the larger discussion after this. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, call oh, Alderman Strait. Madam Chair, can I just have a clarification then? So Alderman Janser is uh, basically committing support towards the 70000 for City Hall, the uh, 320 some odd thousand for the rec, and what was the uh, the five hundred fifty thousand for the Carnegie Center? I believe so. Alderman That's correct. Johnson. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Janser. Yes. Straight. Yes. Pajagula. Yes. Wolski. Yes. Olson. Yes. Motion passes. Alderman Straight. Uh, Madam Chairman, I would like to make a motion to fund uh, and these will be my numbers so I will uh, um, answer any questions a million dollars for the Children's Museum of Minot a million dollars for Roosevelt Park Zoo and a million dollars for Minot State University with the remaining money going towards the uh, city of Minot uh, transfer facility there a second? Second. Alderman Pachagula? Yes. Um, I want to, I will be supporting this motion, and it sounds like Alderman Strait actually uh, somehow copied my notes, which is what I was originally thinking this morning and yesterday. So if he broke into my house, he did a very good job. Or he read my mind. Um, I, I mean to have some levity in this because it's a very difficult situation um, and I want to uh, explain why I'll be supporting the motion and offer some other alternatives. I think the proposals we have before us are very good ones. Quite frankly, the one that tugs at my heartstrings the most is the Children's Museum. Uh, I think that's the best long-range investment we can make in the community. I think the zoo is a wonderful thing. I am concerned to be very frank with the park board and I don't want to criticize another entity, but they have the power to tax and I would like to see them tax or bond or somehow fund this in terms of a structural sense. That's just my suggestion. You know, you're, you're elected, we're elected too. Um, I, I'd be much more comfortable in supporting many of these things if the government entities that have some stake in them. And I think the school system has a major stake in the museum and the park board if they, if they chose to raise their taxes or fees to support this. Um, but as I said before, I'm not real keen on being the, the, primary, uh, the primary bucket people go to. I think we need to partner with these other organizations. And one of the problems I see here is that I don't see us having a community-wide or city-wide, let alone community-wide vision or set of goals in terms of where we invest. I mean, we shouldn't be throwing millions of dollars here and there just because someone makes a good presentation or because we like it. We should have some plan. And I think children and families should be probably number one on that list. So that's one comment. I'd like to see some matching funds from other organizations. Second comment, I think, again, these are worthwhile, go worthwhile uh, things that, that, that Shannon mentioned, um, especially the museum. Um, third point, I want to clarify something about Minot State. Um, I, this is a situation where I don't feel very comfortable, um, and I want to explain that quandary because I don't want to be 
seen as being a hypocrite or being inconsistent. I have not been supportive of the Minot State motion, and I am real reservations. I think the feeling in the community generally, perhaps not the people in this room are the ones, the so-called movers and shakers, the feeling I think in the community as I sense it is that Minot State has gone to the well too often. And I feel very badly for President Shirley and his administration. It's a new administration. They didn't make those commitments. And I think, you know, the, the four or five million dollars they got before were under different administrations. So I don't want to hold that against them. But I think they need to hear that. And I said that privately and I'll say it publicly. I need to need, hear loud and clear that there is that feeling among many people in the community. And I previously come out and said, I don't think I can support it. Having talked with them for, half, for an hour and having heard their presentation, I'm willing to change that somewhat. And the million dollars is something I'm willing to live with. But the reason for that is because it's been presented as a community facility, not an athletic facility. And I'm willing to take some heat on changing my position. And the reason for that is new data, new information, a better understanding, and also the fact they can't get the money from the state. So I'm willing to compromise. And again, I, I want to be very clear about why I'm changing my position on this. Uh, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable in the view of, of community opposition I've seen of giving $2 million to Minot State. I am willing to compromise on one for the sake of the community. So that, that's that comment. The final comment I'd make in terms of funding, and this is something that I want the council to consider, and this is one way I'll, I'll go to the edge of the envelope, ma'am is that I think there are other sources of money out there. And I would feel much more comfortable about giving this money um, if we could tap some of these funds. And specifically, what I'm talking about here is a restaurant tax and an increase in the lodging tax. This is how other communities fund these kinds of programs. We've gotten the message loud and clear from the city manager and the numbers that we're in a bad situation financially. We need to increase our revenue. There are constraints about increasing the property tax. Our fees are being reevaluated, but they, you know, th there's not much elasticity there. But these are two sources of funding that I think we really need to tap and use them to fund these kinds of community facilities. That's how Bismarck funds its event center, I'm under uh, given to, to understand. We'd be talking about, uh, based on preliminary figures from the city, we'd be talking about adding $1.1 million a year to community facilities budget on top of our 2.7. So we'd almost double it. And I think if we tap that resource, it, I would be very much more comfortable giving more to the zoo and the uh, Children's Discovery Center and these other things. Um, that's an untapped source of revenue. On a $10 restaurant bill, if you go to McDonald's or someplace and buy a mall, whatever, it's not going to cost you 10 bucks. On 10 bucks, that would be 10 cents. I don't think anybody's going to notice that, let alone complain. And I think if we're trying to get, generate revenue, through our tourism and recreational facilities and our cultural and educational facilities, I think this is a very good way to help fund that. I originally was going to come to this meeting and vote against anything, thinking it should go toward floods. I had a very sobering discovery during the meeting we had at the auditorium that even if we put $4.8 million toward this, it's really not going to make much of a dent. And I came to the realization that putting giving flood control to the 60 percent of Minot that we're proposing is going to take eight to ten years. But the real realization was that to do the flood protection as it's needed for the rest of it is going to take another ten years. And that was a very sobering experience. So when I added up the money, it came to, I don't know, 150, 170 million dollars or something. And the reality is that 800,000 or a million or 4.8 million isn't going to make much of a difference now. So I, my original idea of putting all of it into flood control, I don't think it's going to make any difference. And that makes me feel very sad. You know, we have to plow ahead. And I'm going to propose something at the council meeting, our budget meeting, to invest more sales tax dollars in flood control. I think we do need to make a commitment. We need to show a good faith effort. But I don't know that, Rob, that, that, that not allocating this money now is going to make a huge difference or make a significant difference even. And I don't think, as I said before, and I still believe, dikes and levees and wall, flood walls are the most important community facility. But they're not the only one. And we can't can't completely ignore these other facilities. So I'm willing to change my position. I'm willing to, to allocate money toward these things, even in our tight cir circumstances. Um, but I wanted to be very clear about why I'm doing that. And to me, this is a reasonable compromise. Politics is the art of compromise. Politics is the art of getting something done. And I think this is right now the only way we can, we can meet these needs. We can balance them. Uh, I will ask when it comes to the council level that we explore these additional uh, funds as, as sources of revenue. Uh, I strongly support the recycling center. I do have some qualms about it being a community development facility. I, I don't think it quite meets the, the, the spirit of it. But, but again, I, I very much respect the city manager telling us that if we don't take it out of this pocket, we'll have to take it out of another one. And I guess I'm willing to do that. So I will support this motion. I would encourage you to support the motion. I feel badly that we're not going to be able to fund more of these facilities. And I wanted people to know why I changed my mind on some of these things. Thank you, ma'am.
Thank you. I do have a comment before I call on Alderman Janser. Um, for the past few years, this committee has only met once a year, and that has been to review the applications that have come before us. I think hearing um, what we've heard today and, and last week, it's very important that this committee meets to discuss how we are going to go forward and, and separate from reviewing the applications so that we have a better plan going forward for next year. So I will be working with city staff and the mayor to get some meetings scheduled. Alderman Janser. Um, um, my comment uh, re regarding the motion is that, you know, I, th I think it, it, um, I think it kind of cuts across um, uh, a, a number of the, of the good projects. Um, I, I also, though, um, have a concern about um, the taxpayers being um, the first gift, the lead gift. I am, I am concerned that, you know, we're giving a million dollars and um, there is no specific timeline, no guarantee that um, anything is going to come to fruition. Um, if we were the final gift and had a guarantee or had a, a reasonable expectation that, you know, the, that next spring the dirt work was going to be going on um, for uh, particularly the Children's Museum and the zoo project, um, I would feel much more comfortable about this. Um, and, and I... Um, you know, I guess MSU, I mean, you can buy half the seating and put it in and, you know, the project gets at least that far. But, um, but it, it, you know, it concerns me that we're, we're tying up money which, you know, may not actually go into use to create what we're trying to create for a number of years depending on fundraising uh, efforts and success and so forth. And so... Um, uh, I just have a concern about that, that we're, you know, you know, we're a little ahead of ourselves perhaps in um, funding some of this based on where those projects are in their evolution today. City Manager. Thank you, Madam Chair. And to Alderman Janser's point, this committee can recommend a time frame by which the money has to be spent or gets returned to the fund or the city for that matter. I just wanted to let you know that you have that option. All right. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Can, uh, well, I'll, I'll go back to you, Alderman Janser. I believe it's a continuation. Um, I, get to straight. I have another question, and I'm not sure if it's for um, Tom or Kelly, but um, can, do we also have the latitude to uh, impose a um, uh, a a match qualification. In other words, in other words, you know, the money we're we're granting the money, but um, before it's dispersed, we need to see that you know there's some kind of a match associated with the project. Chairman Olson and yes. Alderman Janser, uh, I think that would be fine to include that as a contingency. I don't, I believe the MSU project, the Air Dome, did that, I can't recall if somebody mentioned that that was a contingency of that money or not. Looks like maybe we have someone with the answer, finance director. And Madam Chair, Alderman Janser, just a point of clarification as well. The funds are not actually dispersed until the project gets underway. So uh, in this case, if uh, the gift was given out or the award was given out, um, and the funds weren't available and the project wasn't started yet, that money is not given to that organization up front. Um, that money doesn't uh, get dispersed until the project is underway and they submit the documentation that the expenses are there. Alderman Janser. Um, maybe then just in a little additional clarification. So, so let's say one, you know, one of the projects, um, when you say what, when the project is underway, so um, would that work like this, that uh, I say, okay, I want to um, do some dirt work, so that's the beginning of our actual construction. Um, would, would the recipient be able to get money to do that dirt work, um, for instance, or is it when, when we're ready to go with 
the whole thing because we've completed our fundraising, then the money would get dispersed. Do you, do you understand the distinction I'm making there? Uh, Madam Chair, Alderman Janser, and I would think that those would be conditions that could be um, imposed on the award, um, that uh, the, the money had to be matched or um, that a certain percentage of the expected uh, cost could needed to be raised before the project could begin construction um, or that they had some other mechanism to fund the remaining money that was uh, required. Alderman Janser. Thank you very much for that clarification. Sure. Thank you. Continuation? Yeah. Um, I, would, I would move to amend the motion um, on the floor that the, um, that there be a, a match requirement of um, at least 50% of the city funds uh, and that the uh, timetable uh, for reaching that be uh, the uh, December 31st of 2018. Is there a second? I would second that. Alderman Pachula, thank you. All right, um, Alderman Strait has been waiting. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chairman Olson. Yes. <clears throat> I'm going to just speak to the applicants for a second. Um, and I'm going to start with Mr. Lyman and the crew um, from the Children's Museum. I, I want to commend you. I'm, I'm not nervous in the least of awarding you these funds. I would love to award you the whole amount. And it's partly because of not just your presentation, but the community partners on the back of this uh, handout. And I, I think it speaks to the embrace of uh, a grassroots effort that you and your group have put together. And I, I think that is commendable. That's why I don't, I, I'm not fearful uh, and I'm incredibly excited because this I see as a project that is going to lure what we need as a community and how we set ourselves apart. And so I just wanted to comment about that. Second to Becky and the zoo crew, um, I love your passion. I've seen you there. I think what you're trying to do is not just commendable, but I think as we are the oldest zoo, I think it also sets ourselves up for a big uh, community kind of revisioning. And, and I'm glad that Alderman Padragula spoke to the fact that we can't just have walls, flood walls. We have to have something much larger. And, and what you're trying to do there at the zoo, I've been there. And I'm going to be very honest that this is coming from someone who is not a zoo fan, but I'm a fan of you and your crew and the park district because I think the park district has set the city of Minot up with the Mesa Arena and is luring sales tax dollars, heads, beds, however you want to phrase it. That is why we are becoming a dynamic community that has a lot to offer. Yeah, times are tough, but I'm I'm, I'm more optimistic today than I was a year and a half ago or a year ago when I considered running for city council. And the money towards Minot State, I got a lot of pushback over the last week. I take uh, Alderman Padragula's statement to heart. Um, I just got an email again this morning from, we all know, one of our favorite uh, correspondents. Um, but I agree, it's a community facility. and. Um, the challenge that I find sitting up here a year removed and, and it's a tough thing to have to answer to the, the decisions of yesteryear while making the decisions for tomorrow. Sure. And it's a really challenging spot to be in, especially when community residents have more history than I do. Um, but I think this is the, the big bigger vision within the funds that we have uh, to set ourselves up and keep recruiting activities to the city of Minot, which we have to do to pay for the projects, to pay for what we need. And finally, Dan and the recycling, uh, clearly it's a bigger vision that we're trying to get to. I commend you and your staff for trying to solve some ills that have been created over decades. Uh, I wish we could get you all that money today 
we clearly can't. Um, it, it is what it is, and I know we'll get some pushback on that, but um, that's my two cents, and that's why I'm supportive and why I chose to do what we could today. Thank you. I, I do have a comment, and then I'll, I'll get back to you all over <coughs> Pachagula. I'm not sure who can answer this question, but are there any FEMA restrictions on, on building projects within the zoo? Because it was in a floodplain. Um, Madam Chair, I can address that uh, briefly, and then for more specific information, we can turn to our city engineer. But yes, there are requirements for building in a floodplain. Uh, including elevation requirements, uh, documentation, hydraulic analyses requirements. We've met with the <coughs> zoo personnel over this last week since they submitted their application and gone through uh, those details with them. And, and we feel comf comfortable and confident that they can work within the guidelines. Uh, currently, as they exist today, they've been operating under and will have at least about another year to operate in that sort of regulatory framework when the new risk maps go into effect sometime next year, then the, the regulations become more stringent and maybe costly, but they're still, we believe, uh, workable uh, for the zoo. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Padragula. I'd like to give Josh a chance, if it's okay with you, ma'am, to speak first. He's been waiting. All I've right. Spoken Alderman already a little bit. Thank you, Chairman Olson. <clears throat> uh, actually, really just a clarification on the, the particular amendment. Um, did I hear 50 percent match? Yes. Okay, so, so with a million dollar grant, we would be requiring a $500,000 contribution? That's correct. Okay. That is the, I mean, that's the motion. That's the motion. Sure. Yes, sir. Um, I, uh, a comment. Yes. If I may follow. Thank you, Chairman. I, I, uh, I, I appreciate that we, we wandered into the conversation about the conditions. Uh, I think that's, a, that's an essential part of, of what we're talking about here in terms of handing out these dollars and being stewards of these dollars because uh, over the last day what I have come to realize and, and I'm, I think I'm comfortable with the larger motion overall uh, in terms of the, the allocation amounts um, but uh, these aren't uh, these are not our dollars. These are these are the the community's dollars. These are the citizens' dollars, and and I do think it's very important that we uh, protect them and, and place some some stringent conditions upon them, and and make sure that that as these investments are made, that uh, that, that that the full intent of the the fund is honored. And so I. I guess the, the question I would ask myself, and, and I'm asking out loud now, is uh, I, I wonder if that, those particular, if that particular 50% amount is enough, is it, is it high enough? I feel like if we're willing to put a million dollars at stake on these particular projects, obviously with MSU it's very clear they need to raise a, a million dollars uh, to, to finish that project with both the, the zoo and uh, the Children's Museum, I, I, I'm wondering if that number isn't too low. Uh, it, you know, our million dollars, it, part of me feels like, should be matched uh, a little more aggressively. Uh, I, I appreciate the back end time frame. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of thinking out loud here. But so uh, I, I guess I would also ask the question, are there, are there other conditions? Uh, that that we can add to this to to provide more security for the the citizens of Minot in some way, shape, or form. I, I you know, off the top of my head, ideas. You know, we at some point in our future, there's a there's a beautiful children's museum here. Um, should that facility be made available uh, for a for some type of thing as a result of this grant. I know oftentimes when, when large grants are made to big building projects, there are, there are further conditions beyond, attached to these things beyond just the, the fundraising time frame issue. And so I guess I'm just asking these questions out loud to see if it spurs any discussion. Alderman Padragula. I have an answer to that first, and I also have some comments I wanted to follow up. I'm going to give you a chance to speak first. One of the things I mentioned in Minot State was, um, and I think this would go partly toward your uh, guarantee of assurances, is I think every time we give money to a facility, there should be a plaque on the building saying, <coughs> 
funded through the generosity of the citizens and taxpayers of Minot, or partly through the generosity. <coughs> People need to know that. It needs to be upfront. The second thing I recommended to them, and it will be partially answered to your question, is I think we need to publicize these facilities being available. Uh, the dome is available for walkers, but I don't know how many people know that if you're not com uh, acquainted with Minot State. So that's part of what I'm talking about in terms of planning and coordinating. So it's clear to the public, particularly people who are new to the community, where these facilities are. And I think right of access to them is the key thing, and people need to know that. If we give money on the behalf of the citizens, we're the stewards, we're the trustees of their funds, it is their money fundamentally, I think there needs to be some payback, and part of that payback is accessibility. I mean, if you have an event, yeah, but there needs to be clear accessibility by citizens, and there needs to be public accessibility. There needs to be public notice of that. That would make me feel comfortable. Now, in terms of the remarks I was going to make, Alderman Janser also, I think, read my mind, too. One of the things I had on my list was pledge versus outright grant. Uh, I had the privilege of going to some major uh, museums uh, about a month ago when I was in New York City, and a lot, under a lot of the paintings and sculptures that said, promised gift of, and I see that routinely, or pledged, or promised estate of so-and-so when they pass on. And I think that's a custom in the museum community, particularly in the philanthropic end of it, is if, if you have money to give, you give it, but, but you maintain some control over it. And you, and you at a time certain it passes, the ownership passes over to this other organization. And I'm comfortable with what Alderman Janser is pr pr proposing in his, in, his, uh, in his motion. I would just add to that the caveat or the, the addition in terms of let people know who funded this and make sure people are, have right of access. Um, but I, I would be okay with the motion he's presenting. Any okay. further discussion on the amendment, Alderman Janser? I was going to call a question. Thank you. Roll. Um, no. Oh, city manager. Thank you, Madam Chair. We just want some clarification in regard to uh, procedure here. The are we amending the amendment to include um, a higher amount? It doesn't sound like we are. So the amendment stands as it is, and it doesn't sound like we're modifying the amendment to include either a plaque or accessibility. These are just comments. Is that correct? So the amendment stands on its own that it would be a match requirement of 50% and a timetable uh, requirement for that match of December 31st, 2018. Is that correct? I'm okay. I understand it. Great. And then we'll need to have um, the call for the amendment first yes. and then the motion second. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. So call the roll on the amendment, please. Janser? Yes. Street? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Olson? Yes. The motion on the amendment passes. Now we will vote on the amended motion. Call Straight? Yes. Padragula? Yes. Wolski? Yes. Olson? Yes. Janser? Yes. Motion passes. Any further business that needs to come before this committee? Alderman Padragula? I guess just to be, be specific about it, um, I understand you, ma'am, calling for more than one meeting of this committee and hopefully looking at some goals or objectives or at least some discussion of where we're headed as a community with this source of funding. The second thing, uh, you know, I'd like us maybe in the grant application to put in is what I talked about, what the city manager just mentioned, is if you get money from the city, um, the people need to know about it. And I think we can, we can maybe modify, hopefully, our, our technical procedures to make sure that happens. Um, Thank you. Chairman Olson, just a, just a, yes. Thank you. Just a brief follow-up to that. I, I, I agree completely. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, uh, that there may be some uh, additional <coughs> meetings of this particular committee to consider some of these questions because I do think there are some improvements to this process that, that can be made should, uh, in the much larger framework of, of the overall direction of Minot and sales tax and flood protection and all of these things, uh, uh, we've learned a lot about this particular fund and the way this process operates over the last few years, and I think it's a very appropriate time to look back and evaluate and, and continue the, the evolution of, of the fund uh, so that it, that it really does um, meet the spirit and intent of the citizens. Thank you. Thank you to the audience. You've uh, sat through a lot of discussion, so I appreciate you being here. We are adjourned.